Hey everyone, what's going on? This is Zach, and yesterday, technically, uh, today at recording, Pokemon dropped the final trailer for the Indigo Disc DLC and the DLC as a whole. So today we are going to talk about our reaction of it, uh, what I thought about what was coming, and what we saw, and also what's not coming. So if you guys enjoy this content, do not forget to like and subscribe, and let me know down in the comments below, what are you most excited for? So we get the usual stuff, you know, the intro of like the Teal Mask, which we have already played through. Uh, hopefully you have, because if you haven't, <laughs> you won't be able to start the Indigo Disc. Make sure that you complete the regular story mode and the Teal Mask DLC before you go to uh, the Indigo Disc. But we get some information on the Indigo Disc, a little bit more about the area and what kind of missions we're going to see. Uh, as we progress through the story, most of it is going to be double battles, which we already knew and heard most about that. This is really going to test us as uh, competitive players, hopefully. Um, probably not. It's probably going to have the level uh, to a point where we really don't have to try that much because we'll just bring a team of level 100 Pokemon and we'll be fine. Um, in... The Indigo Disc, there will be Ditto Blocks. I wonder if these Ditto Blocks will be locked, uh, will be shiny locked. It'd be funny if one of them was just randomly blue. Uh, you'll get missions to get uh, battle points. So this will be different from League Points, and you'll use it to unlock stuff. You got this Sync Mode where you can control a Pokemon. Uh, so we've went full Mystery Dungeon here, and we're now controlling Pokemon instead of just telling them what to do. As you build up a bond with them, you'll be able to trade with them and those Pokemon will have their name as like a signature. So it will be listed as their Pokemon. So that will be a cool mark to have, especially if you get a competitively viable Pokemon. And here is one of the things that I'm excited about. And these are legendary Pokemon with wild encounters. So we see Suicune, we see Moltres, we see Rayquaza, we see the Legendary Birds and then the Legendary Beast. Uh, the Legendary Beast were kind of expected because they do have those Paradox forms. And from what we've seen before with the Paradox Pokemon, they're all in their original forms are all in the game. So it would kind of be weird to have these Paradox versions of them, but not have the regular forms. And then the Kanto birds have already been in through Pokemon Home. You got, once again, the Swords of Justice trio. Virizion, Terrakion, Cobalion. Once again, Paradox Forms. We knew they were coming. And Latios and Latias, which I think would be really interesting with the Levitate ability. I do think they are going to be very good Terra Pokemon. Uh, whether you are using them for offense or defense, I think they are going to be pretty decent. And I, I'm... I'd love to give them a try. Glastry Air and Spectre Air, which is really good because I'm pretty sure from what we've heard so far of the leak, spoiler alert, but it doesn't seem like they're shiny locked. So this will be the first time that we're able to shiny hunt Spectre Air and Glastry Air, as well as Cub Fu that is also in this trailer as well. You got Ho-Oh, you got Lugia, Solgaleo, Necrozma, Lunala, Groudon, Kyogre, um... And then there are some omissions, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Zekrom, Reshiram, Kiram. We see more about these flying trials. It is going to be a mode where uh, the full flight is unlocked for either Crydon or Maridon based on what version you have. And it seems like once you beat these, like you'll be able to unlock it because later on we do get footage of them using it in Paldea. Once again, you see some of the characters that we'll be battling. It focuses on the double battles, yada, yada, yada. Archer Loot on here. And we see Kieran with his new hairstyle. And apparently it's going to be really tough, but we'll see how it goes. They give us information about the starters. Um, we can see what kind of areas they're available in. And... We see some characters which seem to be Team Star with, you know, uh, they've been subdued back into their student motifs. 
and then a new area of area zero, which is probably going to be, that's a sweet still. Um, they are prob it's probably going to be the end game story where you go deeper into area zero and you see Terra Pagos or Tor Ghosts, um, and you unlock its full like power, its full ability. As you can see, it's it's the big focus of this and probably where terrestrialization comes from. You get this cool little screenshot here. And that's that's really it. Uh, the information was pretty short. And I'll give this time to load. The information was pretty short, but that's really good. We There was stuff that like we didn't see, which is awesome because... It's not too often we get to jump into a DLC or even a Pokemon game in general without knowing everything. Of course, that's going to change by like the second day, but you, you'll still be able to, you know, play through it and enjoy it if you don't want to be spoiled. And then we get some information here. They tell us about the DLC. They tell us about a mystery gift, Darkrai. And then Dialga and Palkia Rage. You can only get one of them. They're virgin exclusive. So you'll have to jump online or play with a friend. Or be like me and just play with two switches. Um, and it should be fun. There's also one more mystery gift Pokemon. And that will be a shiny Lugia and a Master Ball. You get them both through mystery gift. Master Ball's behind my head. And then there will be mass outbreaks for um, Flaybe, Litwick, and Milstery, which, I mean, the only one that is really cool is Milstery because it has lots of forms. So this would be really good to get a lot of shinies out of the way. But other than that, it's just going to be, you know, just a regular mass outbreak. I'm kind of bummed out by them. It's really hard to actually get them with the promoted mark. So that's all. That's kind of a bummer. The DLC uniforms. And then, of course, like advertisement of the connection of Pokemon Home. So uh, as we'll talk about later, we see that some Pokemon, especially with the sub legendaries and the restricted legendaries, there have been some Pokemon omitted from this video. So we are wondering whether they are actually going to make it in or is it going to be a Pokemon Home transfer? Also, uh, the genies. If you look at the genies, you didn't see them in this trailer. So Tornadus, Landorus, Thunderous, and Enamorous, you can still only get through Pokemon Home Transfer. But let's check out the website and see what else we can find out there. So we have information about the Blueberry Academy's League Club, which they give you quests, which they call BBQs. Uh, shout out to Barbecue, who's always in my live stream chats. But these will be missions, so now this mission board will be actually filled up instead of just like a little notification for your sandwiches, which I think is a welcome thing. It's It was like very unused space at first, so this is definitely something that's been planned for a while. And you will get battle points based off of doing these quests. So I wonder if there's a limit on how many you get a day. So that will be curious to see. Uh... If you really need to grind them, you'll probably just date roll just like we do with everything else. And there's the trading Pokemon with like the partner ribbon, which will be cool, uh, especially if they are competitively viable Pokemon. You could use a Magnezone, but I don't know. Throwing styles. This is what I am most excited for. This is something that I've talked about once or twice in the past about customization, something I wanted to see. And you can donate battle points um, to the baseball club and earn different throwing styles, different throwing animations, which seems to be just based off of the gym leaders throwing animations, which makes sense. I would imagine there will be a couple of extra. So if you think about it, if you have just like the team star, uh, the gym leaders and all that stuff, like we should get one for every type. In all honesty, so we'll have at least 15 to 18 like throwing animations. 
I think they'll be very much connected to the coaches that you can offer. You're going to just copy their styles. I hope they do add some original ones, some different ones to change it up. That way there is something unique to these throwing animations. Give us like a behind the back one. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Next up, we will see uh, the legendary Pokemon. So it says that throughout um, the game, you will meet up with Snackworth, which um, why does he have a gremlin face? I don't know. But as you complete Blueberry Academy quest, you will earn snacks, which will attract the legendary Pokemon. So that's how you will earn their encounters. And so you must complete Blueberry quest and then report back to Snackworth. I think it's probably connected to this little crown you see right here. It says like three out of three over here, but then there's also a crown bar. So I would have to say that like once you fill up that bar, once you do so many quests, you probably can meet back to him and get a certain like snack or whatever. It. I wonder if they will be unlocked at random or will you have to, you know, you can pick a certain one kind of like what they did in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl with the slates in Ramona Park. But I feel like for some people, like getting these legendaries are going to be grindy. So I hope we get to choose which one. So like I can go after the ones that I want to shiny hunt first and then like do the rest later because uh, most of these Pokemon, if you've been playing these games for a while, if you have Pokemon Home, if you have po if you had Pokemon Bank, uh, you should have like a decent amount of most of these restricteds already. So the flying, it kind of confirms that it, that it is temporary and parted, but it can be made permanent. So you can unlock this flying feature for Paldea as well uh, as you progress through the story, which, you know, you'll do naturally over time in playing it. And then there is a little bit more information on the new area of area zero. It descended into the great crater, yada, yada, yada. We see some screenshots here. We see this like cool tunnel that we saw in the trailer and then the tree as well. Um, I can't wait to see so much speculation about AZ's Floalette being uh, near this tree or something like that or being able to unlock it somehow, like we're using this tree. And I also wonder how people who complain about the games feel about this tree because uh, trees for some reason are a big point of contention here for a lot of you know, pixel peeping fans. I honestly don't care. Pokemon is Pokemon and it's fun. But that is honestly about it. And it's weird that like the legendary Pokemon Ogre Pond, like we haven't been playing it and using Ogre Pond for like a month. Um, I guess it's because they really didn't talk about the mask before the teal mask came out. But let's let's talk about what's not here. And that comes to certain Pokemon. Certain Pokemon are not here. And you've probably had other people talk about it already. But I, I mean, I'm going to talk about it as well. So as we saw, some Pokemon are coming back. Some of the legendaries are coming back through getting snacks and encountering them naturally in Scarlet and Violet. And then some of them are also just transfer Pokemon. I do think a lot of the transfer Pokemon are via um previous games so i think that we for example we didn't see zacian and zamazenta being in those those previews they are transferable through pokemon home and i think that's fine because they came from the previous game usually they wait a while before like adding them into the next game like that because they want you to still buy and play the previous games uh they want to make it you know, they want to stretch that dollar and those sales every bit as much. But here we have Reg Ice, Reg Rock, Reg Steel, and Reg Gigas. Obviously, the Regis, which is weird because now that we have Reg Alecki and Reg Draco in the games, they're allowed. They're coming in through Pokemon Home, but these Pokemon have not. Uh, so it's not very often that you see the Regis separated from one another. I know that the last two just got added, and that's probably why it's an exception here. So, you know, they, once again, they're only allowed in through Pokemon Home. So they want you to go back, buy the old games, buy the old DLC and play them. So 
these Reggie's you can get without the DLC. So that's probably why they're they're just not adding them in. I do think we're missing out on some good stuff, especially with terrestrialization. Um, you could go, you can go Terra Ghost, Registeel, and Registeel was a big user of like Amnesia and Body Press, and then like you would have like Flash Cannon and Leftovers there. Uh, I definitely used that before in Sword and Shield, and it can be pretty good. And now that you can like get rid of the Fire type weakness, you can get rid of the Fighting type weakness, like and still have body press like that's that's pretty good and then you have flash cannon to hit like fairies and stuff regi rock i don't know how well regi rock would do it's still like it's hard to see a rock type do well with the likes of urshifu like running all over the format so there's something about that and then regi ice i think regi ice would benefit the most from terrestrialization because it has like a giant special defense and a decent physical defense. And we haven't really seen that a lot. So to have something that would, you know, stand well against flutter mains like really easily would be some really good to have. And then with terrestrialization, you can get rid of the ice type. You can take advantage of hail, getting a defense boost. And then reg ice can also run like thunderbolt and ice beam. So you could just have like a solid like bolt beam user. And then you could have like some form of setup and protect with like leftovers and then like the clear body as well. Like you don't have to worry about snarls. You don't have to worry about defense drops or anything like that. Like I think Reg Ice would actually do fairly well. And then there's Regigigas, which would like wheezing is in the game. So like Regigigas would be pretty strong. But I think the biggest loss, the biggest thing that people are disappointed about is the loss of the Tapus. Like we haven't seen the Tapus yet. They're not accessible through Pokemon Home and right now with the current metagame like you really only have grassy terrain and psychic terrain through Ndidi and Rillaboom uh the only other Pokemon that can carry misty terrain other than Tapu Fini right now is Glar Weezing and that's really not that good because most of the time you're running Glar Weezing you want to run the uh, neutralizing gas to get rid of abilities and then the only electric terrain setter, other than Maridon, which is not allowed in VGC yet, is Pincurchin. And <laughs> Pincurchin is not good. Pincurchin is not good. So these could really change up the metagame if they came in. And I think they should eventually. I know everyone's missing that Tapu Fini. But also like Tapu Coco, like giving a way to enable uh, the Cork Drive Pokemon, the Paradox Pokemon from Violet. Because right now it's super easy to set up the sun and use the sun through Tornadus, through Torkoal. So it's really easy to enable uh, Scarlet's Paradox Pokemon with Protosynthesis. But it's not an easy way to set up Cork Drive Pokemon unless you want to run Pinkurchin or something that runs something that runs a, like Electric Terrain or Electric Surge. So I mean... A decent amount of mons run electric terrain. Uh, all the paradox, all the quark drive Pokemon are capable of running it. But do you really want to like put a move slot to set up an electric surge that can just be taken out by a Rillaboom switch in? Probably not. I mean, it's it's a bummer that we don't see the Tapus. I do think that would make it really interesting, especially with Psy Spam. And expanding force, I do think we could see like really good expanding force teams with Tapu Lele. I do think it like Psy Spam in, in itself would be easier to handle if you could easily switch in terrain. And I think they, they should give Tapu Bulu Grassy Glide, especially now that they nerfed it. <laughs> but the last ones is Xerneas, Yveltal, and Zygarde. And actually there is one more. Um, there's not one more. Calyrex is allowed through Pokemon Home. Uh, Xerneas, Javaltal, and Zygarde, the XYZ, the Gen 6 legendaries. And I think that's just because Zygarde and Xerneas are going to be really strong. Like, Zygarde, with its power construct, can get to the 100% form, or the complete form. And this takes a moment where it gets down below 50% health, and then it gets most of it back through like power construct what is it it does it does recover some 
Um, I forget how much, but I think it's a quarter. So it recovers like a quarter of its health or maybe people did that through like a citrus berry, but a lot of people like would do like, like coil protect, um, in sword and shield and then do like thousand arrows and then like some kind of ground move, probably like thousand waves or something like that. And you would just hit hard with ground type moves and also with thousand arrows, you could hit flying type Pokemon. So there was really no protecting it. And one of the things to deal with Zygarde complete other than keeping its stat boost down and burning it was to like hit it with super effective moves like fairy moves or um, ice moves, for example, because being ground and dragon, like you're four times weak to ice. Now with terrestrialization, you can just get rid of that. Like you can run Terra Fire and of course, like you're weak to other stuff, but with like a 121 defense and a 95 special defense with like a coil, like a boosting move and this base HP, if you have something like leftovers or if you have like your next heal pulse Pokemon, like this thing could be dangerous. Yveltal, I, I think Yveltal would be manageable here, but, um, Xerneas being able to do a Geomancy and, you know, like Terra, Terra Ghost, if you want to avoid fake out, uh, Terra Fire for defensive typing, uh, and the Power Herb, which takes away the charge of it, so you don't have to take the charge turn, like, Xerneas would be really strong here, especially with like terrestrialization because you could be offensive and you can terra fairy to get even more power off of your moon blast and dazzling gleams or you could just straight up go for you know like a defensive terra and make it even harder to knock out if well played but these are the pokemon that like so far as far as we know we won't see come back and the only ones that i think we're really missing and a lot of people agree with this is the tapus because terrain wars do make like board position really interesting and it does set up for a lot of unique end games and a lot of unique board positions and also with tapu coco and electric surge like we need a good pokemon to enable uh all these quirk drive pokemon i think having to wait around until maridon is coming around and then having to use maridon as a way to you know use these quirk drive pokemon is a bit of a bummer but I think Tapu Koko could be really capable here. Um, Tapu Lele, especially if they gave them like the move tier moves. Like, can you imagine Tapu Lele with expanding force? Just disgusting. <laughs> but anyways, that is my rundown of the the last trailer. You know, we got to get ready for our trip for Blueberry Academy. It is less than a week away. So I'm super excited for it. I'm going to be streaming it as soon as it drops. So if you want to hang around for that, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you made it this far in the video, I want to say thanks for watching. I know that you've probably seen 10 of these already, but I wanted to, you know, put in my two cents as well. So if you sat by and watched it, thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments down below what you are excited for the most with the Indigo Disc DLC. But that's going to be all. Till next time, I'm Zach. We'll see everyone later.